Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. We have some great ash trees around here. The trouble is, borers are starting to come. Can you lose your tree to either the eastern ash borer or the lilac ash borer? You bet your ass you can. Stay tuned and I'll tell you how to fight back. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Ash borers are a serious problem. Ash trees comprise about 5% of the canopy in the United States and in some cities comprise up to 60% of the urban canopy. So if you have an invasive pest that is taking out ash trees, we've got a serious problem. Now, if you look in the Northeast of the United States, that's where the majority of the emerald ash borer, commonly called the EAB, is doing just a, an incredible amount of damage. And a lot of times their range is extended inadvertently by people transporting firewood to another area from ash grows or ash tree forests and end up helping the pest to get further faster into other areas where they can do further damage. Well, as time has gone on, and you can check out the map that I'll put a link at the, uh, down below in the description, the USDA, the US Department of Agriculture, actually has a distribution map showing it from year to year. I don't think it's every consecutive year, but it's kind of like a freeze frame type of thing where you can see the incidence of where emerald ash borer, EAB, has been identified. And it's working further west in the United States. We're in the mountain west of the United States, uh, in the northern Utah area. Uh, and it is now knocking on our doorstep in Colorado. But for many years, I thought I had EAB on our property. We have three ash trees, and I was treating the trees with drenches and that sort of thing, and I was protected only to find out that, as you can see right here, they made a serious dent. I lost the central leader out of this tree. We're still not sure of whether or not other areas in the tree are gonna fail and die out. We've trimmed out and we're doing active treatment. So what did I do wrong? Well, I was using these kind of products to try to control the LAB, the lilac ash borer. And I really thought that I was doing the right thing because these are the kind of things that you drench or that you do a systemic, you get it into the vascular system of the tree uh, by putting it in the soil at the base of the tree, the tree draws it up and so forth. Uh, sounds really good. What's the problem? Well, the active ingredient in this, imidacloprid, doesn't do a blasted thing for the lilac ash borer. I had no idea until I started doing some research at some of uh, the agricultural college uh, resource pages, Iowa State, Utah State, Colorado State University, and found technical papers that show, especially Iowa State did a great job on this, showing that imidacloprid does nothing to help uh, control um, the, the EAB. Now, just so you know what imidacloprid is, it is a synthetic uh, nicotine. And so nicotine is very toxic to insects. As a matter of fact, some of the old timers would use uh, tonics. Uh, you may have remembered a, a, a famous gardener advisor named Jerry Baker that had all sorts of tonics. And he would actually advise being able to do uh, extracts from chew tobacco to use as a spray to control bugs. And what you were doing is nicotine affects the neurotransmitters severely uh, in insects and stops them just really cold. But that type of chemical does not work well for the lilac ash borer. So what do you need to control the lilac ash borer? Well, first of all, it's not a drench, it's a spray. And so you're gonna use things like this, Seven, which has carbaryl in it. Iowa State makes a very strong case for saying what works the very best is permethrin type of preparations, and it's sprayed at the right time. Now, like any other cycle with insects, it's a certain phase of the insect that does the damage. Um, the moth that actually lays the eggs, you have probably mistaken, as I have, 
as a wasp. They look a lot like the standard kind of wasp and hornet you see around or yellow jacket. And it's not until you get up really close and take a good look at them and see that they actually have their four wings are different, the way they're set up. They're not a wasp, but they masquerade as one. And what they do is they hatch out in the early spring. It's about time in the next three weeks they'll start hatching out out of the tree where they've bored in from the previous year. Uh, and so the wasp is going to lay eggs. They're going to, oh, excuse me, they're going to fly, mate. Then the females are going to start secreting eggs within, uh, within a day of mating. And they're going to find every little crack and fissure and wound they can in either green ash trees, white ash trees, all of these kind of ash trees. And they're going to secrete their eggs in there. Then the eggs are going to pupate. They're going to go in, start digging in. And once they get inside underneath the bark, they're going to snack and create a whole bunch of galleries throughout the area that is the vascular portion of the tree. So, to control them, you've got to spray using carbaryl or uh, a permethrin, bifenthrin, all those kinds of uh, sprays uh, to knock down the wasp as fast, or not the wasp, the moss that look like wasp, and to kill the eggs on the surface of the trees and in the, in, in the little cracks as quick as you can to control them before they have a chance to get protected under the bark. All right, let's go back to botany classes that you may have taken in college or maybe back in high school to understand what's going on. As you probably recall the names xylem and phloem, okay? Xylem is a plant tissue that actually transmits water, mineral, minerals, and nutrients from the root structure up to the leaves and the upper branches. Uh, and is also the rigid part of the tree. Many times the heartwood, it what gives the tree rigidity and structure, strength, okay? Now on the nearest, the outside right under the bark is what's called the phloem. And the phloem actually is returning all the nutrients uh, and all the carbohydrates that have been generated through photosynthesis at the leaves. And it's this circular action, it's flowing back into the roots nourishing everything, the tree grows, it grow more rings, and that, at, uh, that cycle continues. The problem with these borers, whether it's an emerald ash borer or a lilac ash borer, is they get into the phloem area and create a wide range of galleries, impeding where no longer the vascular system can work, and therefore you end up with sections of the tree dying out. Trees that are stressed, wounded, or young and are rapidly growing or especially prone to infestation by these borers. Now there's a lot of great information out there that is way beyond the scope of what we've got. Like I said, you can check out USDA, you can check out the technical papers at your land grant college or your Aggie college in your state. I hope this has been helpful to you. Thanks for tuning in. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay from dirtfarmerjay.com.